We saw that holiness was bought for us through the atonement of Christ, but how does that become real to us? That's the question this morning. Good morning and welcome to God's Resistance. God's Resistance is local in Wilkes-Barre in the Wyoming Valley and spreading elsewhere. If you need someone to talk to or pray with and are interested in joining a small group to help you live as a disciple of Christ, stay tuned for contact info. My name is Eric Samborski, and I want to thank you for tuning into God's Resistance, where we resist sin, self, the devil, and the world. You can hear us every Sunday at 9 a.m. on WITK, 1550 a.m. and 94.7 FM. If you missed the radio broadcast, then look for the God's Resistance podcast on your favorite podcast platform and YouTube and Gab TV at 9 a.m. every Sunday where these are uploaded, and you're going to find other content on there as well. You can find us at godsresistance.com and on Facebook, Gab, Gab TV, and YouTube at God's Resistance. That is spelled G-O-D-S-R-E-S-I-S-T-A-N-C-E. When you visit any of those places, make sure to like, follow, and turn on notifications for helpful spiritual content. We had been meeting every Sunday at noon um, out on the public square in Wilkes-Barre, but because of the winter coming and consistency's sake, Uh, We are taking a break from that until the spring uh, comes our way. You may still catch us out on the streets at other points, uh, but right now we are meeting inside of homes. And uh, if you want to be a part of a discipleship group, if you want to look into the Bible together, then please contact us at gods.resistance at gmail.com or give us a call at 570-362-7782. Now let's listen in on today's briefing. We are continuing our study about holiness. We're going through a book uh, written by Leslie Wilcox called Be Ye Holy. I plug this every time. You can probably find it on Amazon. You can go to God's Revivalist Press uh, Publishing. You will find it there, and it just takes scripture after scripture and gives you kind of a, a study guide going through all these things and seeing for yourself, what does the scripture say about this? It is. There's no doubt, if you're a Christian and you read the Bible, you realize that God wants us to be holy. And a lot of times, people, uh, what we hear in present-day evangelicalism is God wants us to be happy. The ironic thing is that when we are holy, we are most deeply happy in God. And that happiness is not superficial or shallow, but it is a deep joy in the soul because of where God has placed us and who dwells within us. But we, we think about holiness. Last week, we dealt with holiness being uh, bought for us through the atonement of Jesus Christ. And we think, okay, that's great. That sounds great on paper. But how do I obtain holiness? Or do I even obtain it? My response to you is, yes, you do obtain it. It's not just mental gymnastics where God says, if you believe the right doctrine, then you just have holiness imputed to you and you still live uh, just as wicked of a life as you did before. no. He does impute holiness to us. That means he reckons to our account things that really aren't ours, except that through faith in the the sacrifice of Christ, they are made ours. And it doesn't just stop there. God imparts holiness to us. He imparts himself to us. He dwells within us. So it's necessary for us to look at the whole work of the Spirit, the Spirit of God, that is, as it relates to the plan of salvation. Um, I think it was Daniel Steele. He dubbed the Holy Spirit of God as the executive uh, or the executor of the Godhead. So just like in our government, we have the executive branch, which, which executes the laws. The Holy Spirit is the executor of the Godhead. So whatever God wants to do, the Holy Spirit is the, is the person that does it, that makes it real. So if we want a holy heart, a holy life, the Holy Spirit does that in us, through us. He makes God's will a reality to you and, and, and to I. So there's many different ideas, both within uh, holiness circles of churches and without the holiness circles of churches, of what the Spirit does and how He does it and when He does it, as, as far as holiness is concerned. But all that aside, you and I have to answer this question. What does the Bible teach? What does the Bible say? Because ultimately, we're going to stand before God and we're going to be judged by that book, the Bible. So let's look at the relation of the Spirit to the plan of salvation. And it, I, I'm just saying, telling you up front, this is probably going to be a two-part um, thing because of all the different aspects that we have to cover. So we'll do one part now and uh, another part next, or and that might be broken up more depending on how far along we get here this morning. But the relation of the Holy Spirit 
to the plan of salvation. So, uh, words or phrases describing the Holy Spirit's activities. One thing we're told in the scripture is that he reveals. 1 Corinthians 2, 10 through 12. But God hath revealed them unto us by his Spirit. For the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the Spirit of man which is in him? Even so, the things of God knoweth no man but the Spirit of God. Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. So we as people have a natural human faculty uh, to think about things, to ponder it, to use analytical uh, you know, processes to figure things out. And through that, we get something of an aha moment. And then we understand different aspects of life. He's saying, who knows the things of a man or the deep issues of a man's heart except the spirit of the man that's in him? Even so, the things of God, no man knows except the spirit of God. So the spirit of God reveals to us who God really is. Now, ultimately, God's not going to reveal to us anything contrary to the scripture. So if we get any supposed revelation like that, we can uh, attribute that to the devil if it goes against the Bible. So we need to, there's a lot of people that they're looking for all these feelings. They're looking for uh, some kind of supernatural occurrence and abandoning the word of God. The word of God is his revelation to us of who he is. And through the word of God, the spirit does move and speak in our lives. So. The Spirit of God helps us to understand the things of God. And we have not received the Spirit of the world, as the Scripture says, but we receive the Spirit of God so we can know what God's freely given to us. That is a revelation. That's not something that we just think through and go, oh, that's what he's given to us. The Spirit of God gives us a revelation. Ephesians 1.17 says, That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the Spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. So this is a gift of the spirit to us. It says the natural man can only discern the the natural things of life, but a spiritual man is made a spiritual man by the spirit of God and can discern spiritual things. So the Holy Spirit gives us wisdom, revelation in the knowledge of God, who he is. I think that's probably what's wrong with American or Western Christianity at large is we've We've lost who God is. We've made a God in our own image and not the God that we find revealed in this Bible. And certainly not the God that the Spirit of God would help us to know and to understand. So he reveals. He also reproves or convicts. John 16, 8. And when he is come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. So that is the work of the Spirit of God. Now, Jesus said, it's expedient for me that I leave and I'm going to send the Spirit. The disciples were really sad about that because they're thinking, we we just like have been walking with these three and a half years. We're starting to like get the hang of things and now you're going to leave? But Jesus said, it's expedient. It's going to be a whole lot better. Why? Because then he said, he's going to send us another comforter, which is the Spirit of God. And now he's not limited to a geographical location on a map. The, the Spirit of God is wherever the believers of Christ are and dwelling in the believers of Christ. And it, we're told that that Spirit, the Spirit of God, when he's come, will reprove the world of sin, convicts the world of sin. So the world's not going to know what sin is except the Spirit of God convicts him. And he does that mainly through his people. He can do it without his people, but mainly he does it with his people and through them. So the Spirit of God living inside of you and I convicts a sinful world without the body of Christ. And then he shows what true righteousness is. How? Because of Christ. The spirit of God is always pointing to Christ. And then we can find that later in John chapter 16, the verses after what, verse eight here, that he convinces of righteousness because of Christ, because of his life, because of who he is, because he rose. And then he convinces us of judgment as well, because Christ is now in heaven, seated at the right hand of the father and is going to judge the world in righteousness. That is the work of the Spirit of God. So, dear listener, if we if we want to, for lack of better words, harness the Spirit of God, His power, 
to affect change around us, we've got to move in the channels that he's already moving. And that is, he is reproving the world or convicting the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. If we're not doing that in our own lives, then we are not working together with the Spirit. But that's what he's doing. He's trying to show people the truth through his convicting power. He strives, okay? So he, he shows us by convicting or reproving us, but then he strives with us. That's an earnestness of, of being, an earnestness of heart, trying to affect a change in somebody. Genesis 6, 3, we're told, the Lord said, my spirit shall not always strive with man for that he also is flesh, yet his days shall be in 120 years. Now, that was spoken of in the manner that my spirit is not going to strive with men forever because this coming judgment of the flood is upon you and I am tired. I'm trying to work with you and you're not listening. That's some of the context of Genesis, uh, Genesis 6, 3. However, he, just by this verse, we realize that the spirit of God, just by implication, strives with people, strives with you and I to turn us to truth, to turn us to righteousness. So the Spirit of God is reproving and convicting, but he's striving with us. He's revealing God's truth to us. That is the Spirit of God. If you feel that striving in your spirit, that highest sense of oughtness, it is the Spirit of God likely trying to get a hold of you. We're told that the Spirit of God regenerates. John 3, 8, Jesus said, the wind bloweth where it listeth or wishes, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh, and whither it goeth. So is everyone that is born of the Spirit. So we're told that the Spirit of God, he comes in on the scene, makes a new creature out of us. He is breathing that breath of life into souls that will repent and receive him. The Spirit of God regenerates. He makes us new again. Um, he also bears witness, Romans eight sixteen. The spirit itself or himself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. If it weren't for the witness of the spirit, you and I, we could say, uh, I'm a Christian and uh, I go to a certain church. I've been baptized, all the different things. The thing is, I've been around some people that um, are Amish and they have a real struggle in that they cannot they don't have a real strong assurance that they're going to make it to heaven. They're like, I hope I'll make it. I, I'm i trying to do my best. That's the lion's share of people in the United States uh, and probably throughout many parts of the world. I hope I'll make it, whatever their ideas of heaven is. However, the privilege of a believer is that God, through the spirit, bears witness with our spirit. So our spirit is saying, I'm meeting God's conditions. There's nothing I've held back and I'm trusting in him to save me. I'm trusting in him as my savior. Then the spirit of God attests to the same. He looks at things and he says, you have met my conditions. You are my child. You have been born again. You have been radically made new. And so my spirit and his spirit together make a joint witness. We're told that we then know that we are the children of God. I don't need somebody to come along and tell me that. The Bible shows us what a real Christian is. But I don't need somebody to tell me it is my privilege to seek God until I know that I know that I know that I have been born again, that I am his child. So he bears witness. He sanctifies, 2 Thessalonians 2.13. But we are bound to give thanks always to God for you, brethren, beloved of the Lord, because God hath from the beginning chosen you to salvation. How? Through sanctification of the spirit and belief of the truth. So the spirit sanctifies us right here. We are chosen to salvation through the means of the Spirit sanctifying us and our believing in the truth. The Spirit of God also teaches, John 14, 26, but the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. So he teaches us, John 14, 26. He brings to our remembrance. It's what It'd be one thing if, if God expected for us to take the entire Bible and remember every single word in it from cover to cover. And I'm not discouraging us memorizing portions of the Bible. But we read the Bible, we are exposed to it, and we read it and reread it over and over again. The Spirit of God brings back to our mind things we've read and teaches us 
what he's meaning by certain things and applying it to our present uh, circumstance. In case you've just tuned in, you are listening to God's Resistance, where we resist sin, self, the devil, and the world. You can hear us every Sunday at 9 a.m. on WITK, 1550 a.m. and 94.7 FM. Visit and like our social media accounts with Facebook, Twitter, Gab, Gab TV, and YouTube. Visit our website at www.godsresistance.com and contact us by email at gods.resistance at gmail.com or call us at 570-362-7782. The Spirit of God also guides us. John 16, 13. Howbeit when he, the Spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will shew you things to come. So he's guiding us into all truth. Excuse me. So he's guiding us into all truth because we're told that we as people are like sheep that go astray. So he guides us. He's not only teaching us, but then he's saying, here's how you walk. Here's the direction that you should go. He helps us. Romans 8, 26. Likewise, the spirit also helpeth our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the spirit itself or himself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. So notice it says he helps our infirmities, our weaknesses, not our sins. He convicts us of sins, but he helps our infirmities or weaknesses. That is the spirit of God. That's what he does. Isn't it wonderful? When you when you really look at this picture, it starts to build such a confidence in, in us to realize that God is on our side and he, he will help the person that wants the help. We're told that he also uh, intercedes in that same verse. So not only is he helping our infirmities, but the spirit himself is making intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. So he's bringing petitions to God the Father through Jesus Christ concerning our lives and concerning what's going on with us. He is interceding for us, stepping in on our behalf so that we are, will make it, so that we're going to be successful in the Christian life. We may not be successful in the world's eyes, but we'll be successful so far as Christ is concerned. Uh, we are told also that he will quicken the body at the resurrection, Romans 8, 13. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. So here, the spirit in us is a down payment of our eternal salvation. And he will raise up these corruptible bodies in the last day, these mortal bodies. He will raise them up in resurrection power. Are there other passages about the, the Spirit? Definitely. Uh, but these show the sufficiency of the range and variety of the Spirit's work. He doesn't ju do just one thing. He is covering a, w a wide swath of human experience and human need and making the promises and power of God real to you and I so that it's not just a bunch of mental gymnastics, but it's something that, that gets to where we're living. There are also titles applied to the Spirit of God. And they're given on purpose. So a few uh, that we'll go over to see the scriptural usage of these titles uh, and then showing how the Bible uses these or employs, the, employs these titles. We, we see in the Bible oftentimes the word spirit alone all by itself. John 3, or excuse me, John 7, 39. But this spake he, that's Jesus, spake of the spirit which they that believe on him should receive for the Holy Ghost was not yet given because that Jesus was not yet glorified. So he's just referred to simply as the Spirit. Uh, Acts 16, 7. After they were come to Mycenae, they essayed to go into Bithynia, but the Spirit suffered them not. Again, he has just called the Spirit. The word Spirit with the name of one of the other persons of the deity we also see. So the deity, what I mean by that is the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. That'd have to be an entirely separate uh, talk here. But we, we hear him or see him referred to as the Spirit of the Lord, 2 Corinthians 3, 17. Now the, now the Lord is that Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. 
where God's spirit is, there's liberty. Does that mean liberty to do whatever we please? No, it means liberty to live a godly life, free from all the chains that would bound, bind us and hold us down, free to serve God in love and in holiness. We need to recognize that from the whole tenor of scripture because people will use these scriptures to live directly contrary to what the scripture teaches. So he, he's referred to as the spirit of the Lord, the spirit of God, 1 Corinthians 3.16 Know ye not that ye are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? The Spirit of God. This helps us to understand the concept of the Trinity uh, as we go through some of these things. We, we, we see him referred to as the Spirit, the Spirit of the Lord, the Spirit of God. The Holy Spirit of God is another one. Ephesians 4.30 And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. So, here, he's referred to as the Holy Spirit of God, but also showing us the quality of this spirit. And can two walk together except they be agreed? In other words, can you have the Holy Spirit of God in your life if you're living a wicked and sinful life? It doesn't make any sense. But he's referred to as the Holy Spirit of God, his spirit. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead, we read this Romans 8, 11, dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit. That dwelleth in you. That's Christ's spirit. So the Holy Spirit is Christ's spirit, according to the scripture here. The spirit of his son in Galatians 4, 6. And because ye are sons, God hath sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. So the Holy Spirit is the spirit of Jesus Christ, which is the Father's son. Uh, explicitly, we, we heard the spirit of Christ, the spirit of Jesus Christ, Philippians 1, 19. For I know that this shall turn to my salvation through your prayer and the supply of the spirit of Jesus Christ. We also find the spirit referred to um, as an adjective. So the Holy Spirit or Holy Ghost, which is the same uh, in Greek frequently. So the eternal spirit, that's a, a spirit as an adjective. So uh, Hebrews 9, 14, we read this. How much more shall the blood of Christ who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. So we're getting a scope of who the spirit of God is, uh, you know, by definition of things that he does, uh, by titles that he's been given, uh, descriptive terms uh, that has been used of him, uh, the eternal spirit. So he's he's always been, ever will be, he's eternal, he's God. Uh, that nothing really can be eternal except it be God. Um, so spirit uh, of glory, he's referred to. First Peter 4.14, If ye be reproached for the name of Christ, happy are ye, for the spirit of glory and of God resteth upon you. On their part he's evil spoken of, but on your part he is glorified. Glory meaning the, sh the shining forth of God's excellencies. So we're, we're saying that the shining forth of God's excellencies, it's the spirit of God. That's a, a spirit of glory here. He's the spirit of truth. John 14, uh, 17. Even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. This is something we need to just park on for a second. A lot of times people say, I, I've been around others, oh, I, I feel the spirit, he... Uh, you know, he thrills me, he does whatever. And I'm not denying the fact that sometimes you may have certain emotions as it relates to the presence of God in your life. However, if the spirit that is affecting you is not leading you to the truth of God's word and leading you astray, it's not the Holy Spirit of God. It's not the spirit of truth, as the scripture says. It says that the world can't receive the spirit of truth Neither can those that call themselves Christians and continue living in wickedness because they have the spirit of the world in them. The, the world cannot receive the spirit of truth because it doesn't see him, doesn't know him. But we're told here that the Christian does know the spirit of truth. What, how? Because he dwells with you and shall be in you. And in Amos, I already referenced this before, but the, the rhetorical question is asked, can two walk together except they be agreed? And we understand the answer to be, no, that's impossible. So the spirit of truth is 
is God, and he's going to lead us into all truth, as we've already read. He's the spirit of wisdom, Ephesians 1, 17. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. So he's the spirit of wisdom and of revelation. If I need wisdom, I need the spirit of God. He's made unto us, this is talking about Christ, but we already know that Christ uh, is the spirit and the, and the concept of the Trinity, but is made to, uh, unto us wisdom, righteousness, and sanctification. He is referred to as the spirit of wisdom. He's referred to also as the spirit of life. Romans 8, 2, for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. So the spirit is life. The spirit of faith we read about also, 2 Corinthians 4, 13. We having the same spirit of faith, according as it is written, I believed and therefore have I spoken. We also believe and therefore speak. In other words, when the spirit of God is present, faith is a byproduct. When the spirit of God is within me, when the spirit of God is working on me, faith rises up. The spirit of faith, because he is the spirit of faith. He's also the spirit of power, 2 Timothy 1, 7. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, the spirit of power and of love and of a sound mind. You need power in your Christian life. You need power uh, to witness. You need power to live holy and godly in, a, in this present evil and crooked and perverse generation. You need the spirit of God. He's the spirit of power. He's the spirit of love, according to the same verse. If there's any time we need love, it's right now. Um, we need love, not ushy gushy teddy bear cotton candy love, but God's love. The love that can see the things that are wrong, reject them, and yet yearn for a, a change in people, yearning for them to come to repentance. The spirit of love that will love the way Jesus loved, that's impossible except through the spirit of God. Um, I didn't have this down, but it, just as we're in the verse right here, but the spirit of a sound mind. If there's any time we need a sound mind, it's right now, and the spirit of God will help us to get that. The spirit of grace, of how much sore punishment suppose ye shall he be thought worthy, who hath trodden underfoot the Son of God and hath counted the blood of the covenant wherewith he was sanctified an unholy thing and hath done despite unto the spirit of grace. Oh, we need grace. Don't transgress against the spirit of grace. The spirit of holiness, Romans 1, 4, and declared to be the Son of God with power according to the spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead. He's also said to be the spirit of adoption in Romans eight fifteen. but ye have received the spirit of adoption whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit was also called the Comforter, John 14, 16. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another Comforter, that he may abide with you forever. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. But when the Comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth, which proceedeth from the Father, he shall testify of me Nevertheless, I tell you the truth, it is expedient for you that I go away, for if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you, but if I depart, I will send him unto you. So there's a variety of names used for the Spirit, uh, and it's intended to uh, point out the particular office, work, or function of the Spirit of God, uh, which is referred to in any given passage. So the Spirit of God uh, helps us to realize the Spirit's deity, the administration of the affairs of the Godhead, the Spirit of the Son, uh, or Christ in his emphasis in the work of salvation, naming an attribute or activity of the Spirit, his office work, the example being the Spirit of uh, of glory, so an impartation of glory, the Spirit of grace, grace uh, toward the soul, uh, bestowed on the soul, the Spirit of adoption, the one who certifies the soul that he's born again, the Spirit of life, he's the giver of spiritual life. Um, also, his the names and attributes also help us to understand the Spirit's function in the work of salvation. We also realize his character. He's the Holy Spirit. Um, so his character is holy. The, the work that he does is holy. And then in the comforter, we realize that Jesus said when the Holy Ghost has come, he would be a comforter. So there's a new relationship of a sanctified believer with the Spirit of God. Well, that's kind of a crash uh, course, so to speak, through the Spirit of God. There's a whole lot that can be said, and I'm sorry this had to go so quickly through. 
But uh, your next step is to give us a call, get in contact with us so that we can uh, disciple, we can talk about things more. Uh, Call us at 570-362-7782. But above all, join the resistance, God's resistance. Special thank you to Spectacular Sound Productions for giving permission for the use of the song Heroes and Monsters, which was edited and used in part on this production. The permission was granted under Attribution Share Alike 4.0 International Creative Commons license. That license may be found at https colon forward slash forward slash creative commons dot org forward slash licenses forward slash by hyphen essay forward slash 4.0 forward slash legal code.